Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about stability the more traditional way. And this would be what we uh, calculate if we only have, say, a two-port network representation uh, of, an, uh, of a transistor and amplifier. So in our two-port network representation, we might have an S-parameter matrix, and we can represent the uh, reflection coefficient looking towards the source as gamma S, looking towards the input as gamma N, looking towards the output as gamma out, and looking towards the load as gamma L. Now traditionally for stability, we want our gamma S and gamma L to be less than 1. We can define gamma n as S11 plus S12 times S21 divided by 1 minus S22 times gamma L. And we want the magnitude of this to be less than 1. We can define gamma out as S22 plus S12 times S21 divided by 1 minus S11 times gamma S. And again, we want the magnitude of this to be less than 1. Now, when we only have uh, S parameters uh, to represent our device, uh, we obviously can't do anything to change the device itself. So when we talk about stability in these cases, we're going to be talking about things that we do to the uh, input or output to stabilize them, such as adding resistance to the input or the output. So from these S parameters, we can calculate uh, what we would call stability circles. And we will start uh, by finding uh, the stability circles. First, we need to find the determinant which is S11 times S22 minus S12 times S21. And then from this, we can find the radius uh, or the center of a circle relative to the center of the Smith chart that would define a stability circle. So what we're talking about would be the distance from the center of the Smith chart to the center of the circle that's drawn here. And we can find one of these for the load and one of these for the source. So here we found the distance from the center of the Smith chart to the center of the stability circle. So this distance would be either CL or CS. And then we can find the radius of the stability circle. This radius would be RS or RL and they're given by the following. Now, as I've drawn it, the stability circle lies entirely outside of the Smith chart, which we'll see in a moment is a good thing. So let's first examine our other condition for stability, and that is uh, what we'll call case one. This is where our stability circle overlaps with the Smith chart. In other words, the combination of the radius uh, from the center of the Smith chart and the radius of the circle causes the stability circle to overlap somewhat with the Smith chart. If we assume that at the magnitude of S11 is less than 1, then the regions of these circles represent different gamma n's. Now remember our basic condition for stability was that S11 is less than 1 and that gamma n is less than 1. The circle, the stability circle, represents the boundary where gamma n is exactly equal to 1. The region where of overlap is where gamma n is greater than 1, and the region uh, where there's no overlap is where gamma n is less than 1. So we can say that in the case where S11 is less than 1, the region that I'm shading here would be our stable region. If, on the other hand, the magnitude of S11 is greater than 1, we have kind of the opposite scenario where the region of overlap is the region of stability. We can do a similar thing at the load. This was done at the source. We can do this, a similar thing at the load. In the cases we've just drawn, the shaded region on the left would be the st stable region, and on the right, the shaded region here would be the stable region. Those are the cases if the 
stability circle overlaps with the Smith chart. But as I mentioned in the uh, first page of the notes, uh, if the circles are completely outside of the Smith chart, then the circuit is unconditionally And I should clarify a bit here. What we mean by conditional stability is that in the shaded region, if we uh, provide an impedance that uh, creates this termination uh, in, in, in the shaded region, the circuit's going to be stable. So uh, in the uh, case on the left here, if we provide any impedance to terminate the input uh, that, that lands in the shaded region, the circuit will be stable. In the case on the right, we would have to uh, and, uh, terminate uh, in the shaded region. And of course, you can see that there's a lot smaller region to terminate. All right, so let's look at our unconditional stability case. Here it's explicitly clear that S11 and S22 are both less than 1, and the CS, CL, and RS and RL result in circles that are completely outside of the Smith chart. Now, much like we uh, found a K factor for uh, our prior example uh, using uh, emittance parameters, we can also find a K parameter using uh, S parameters. So here we find that K using S parameters is equal to one minus the magnitude of S11 squared minus the magnitude of S22 squared plus the determinant squared divided by two times the magnitude of S21 times S12. And just like in our prior case, K needs to be greater than 1 in order to ensure stability. We have a secondary uh, stability criterion called beta. Beta is equal to 1 plus S11 squared minus S22 uh, magnitude squared minus the determinant uh, magnitude squared. Now what you'll notice about these is that when we're given a device that we just have an S parameter based model for, we can calculate these things. But again, we can't do anything to ensure stability uh, from the perspective of the device. All we can do is add a resistance uh, or change the termination at the input or the output. Now, one thing that we should note so far is that we've, uh, that we've looked so far at just linear amplifiers and primarily class A, class B, and our hybrid between the two, class A and B. And what we'll notice about linear amplifiers is they, they give us relatively low efficiency and they have challenges or can have challenges with stability. And so what we're going to start looking at in the next uh, several lectures is to start using switching amplifiers and pulse shaping to try and improve the efficiency of the amplifier. And we'll learn that these techniques have some drawbacks too. And really, one of the keys about RF and analog design is understanding what our trade-offs are in our circuits, uh, because all real circuits have trade-offs. We generally can't have everything that we're looking for with one circuit. So we'll stop there and Talk to you next time.